Welcome to A&B Jukebox Repair, your one-stop source for road jukebox repair service and replacement parts. I uh, also want to welcome you to our new jukebox repair video series, You Can Do It, and truly, you can do it. My name is Bruce Wentworth, and I'll be your instructor today. Um, today's segment is going to be on troubleshooting voltages in a row record model jukebox. And this is going to be on models R84 to R94, so for 10 years, this is going to cover those 10 years of jukebox models. Um, it's very important to understand that your jukebox has to have the right voltage to the right to, to your solid state circuit boards in order to function properly. And a lot of people take for granted that these jukeboxes are going to last and last and last last forever. But let me tell you, this is a, from 1980, an R84 was made in 1980, so that makes it 36 years old. And another thing to take in consideration is where these jukeboxes are stored. A number of times they put these jukeboxes in damp, humid basements. And those basements are very, very subject to getting oxid oxidization on your contacts and your plugs. And after a number of years, it's not long before you lose the conductivity of the electricity going into those plugs. You're going to lose your voltages. They're going to change. And when they change, it it affects your ability to work your jukebox or your jukebox might not function at all. So a lot of times, I'd say probably about 20% of the time, one in five customers call and they say they have a problem with their jukebox and we help them diagnose it to what it normally should be, the component that's normally being affected by it. But what's actually happening, it's not the component, it's actually the voltage going in. And it's either a bad pin, a loose pin, a, a corroded pin, or it's it's farther down the line before it got to that component. So in order to eliminate these, the guesswork and to save you money in sending components back and forth to myself or to save you money in expensive service calls because a lot of technicians don't carry multimeters and some do and some don't. And if they don't have a multimeter and if they don't understand how to troubleshoot the voltages, you're going to have problems. They're going to be coming back two, three, four times before you get your matter fixed. So. Today, you're going to learn how to do it yourself. And that's the nice thing about this. Um, when you, by the time we're done today, you should have a good understanding of how to measure the voltages, which pins are what, what they mean, and what, 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 what you should need to do to fix the problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you this jukebox here. This is a solid state model RE7, made in 1983. Um, so it's, it's actually 33 years old right now. And um, this is a voltage troubleshooting sheet. This is an outline that I made. And it's telling you how to measure the voltages step by step. It's also telling you each wire and, and the plugs that we're, that we're calling out and what the voltages should be. Like this first one, this is plug P105 on the central control computer. And it also should measure the same at P202 on the MEC control board. But the first pin, it's, it's, its color is orange. So the white is orange. You have eight volts DC. And what does that wire do? It's the cancel signal. So if the jukebox ain't canceling, you can go to that one pin, check and see if you got the voltage there at the cancel signal, going into the MEC control board or the central control computer. Okay, so it's not always the computer. Like I said, 20% of the time, it's a pin, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the wires, um, either oxidized pin, loose pin, or corroded pin. So let's go ahead and show you how to do this right now, okay? So this, as this tells you here, the first step we're going to do is we're going to get the multimeter. You need a multimeter for this to do this troubleshooting. You, we're going to stick the probes into the black back of the plugs while the, while the plugs are plugged into the units. You're not going to cause any kind of a voltage. Um, we're not going to blow any voltages or you cause any kind of a overload to the system by doing this. We're measuring low voltages, and the multimeter is just there to test it, to read the voltage. It's not there to to change the voltage in any way. So, okay, so the first thing we'll do is going to come down now and the jukebox is already on. This is the multimeter. Okay, and in my troubleshooting shot, it tells you to go into plug P206. This is plug P206, the bottom of the MEC control board. Okay, and what you want to do is you see over here, this says pin one, this open space. You want to count over one, two, three, four, five. You see that black wire with the white stripe on it? That's the ground, okay? That's the ground. So basically, this one here, this is a logic common. We're gonna stick your, your common probe right into the back, okay? Just stick it in there like that and leave it there, 
okay? Now we're going to take the positive probe. Okay, first the meter to your left has to be on, we're going to check DC voltage right now. So DC will be the second one, the V with the solid line, that's DC voltage, okay? The first one, the V with, this, with the squirrely line, that's AC voltage. We're going to be checking both AC and DC. So let's, t let's go over just how the voltages get to this point here, how they travel along your jukebox. We're going to go to the power supply. If you go to the power supply and you look on the left side where the three lights are, this is where your power comes out of the power supply. It goes into this plug right here. This plug follows this harness, okay? And this harness goes up and it goes, it goes down here. It comes over and it goes into the service switch, okay? Now you can shut the voltage off all the way to the, to the circuit boards by pulling it off or we can leave it on. Okay, next the voltage travels along the, the, the floor of the jukebox and it comes into this Molex plug. You got a nine position Molex plug right there. Okay, then it travels over here and it comes in and this is what you call internal wiring. Wiring that's attached. From this plug you have a harness that's attached to the frame of this mechanism and it comes in right here, 206 and 207. They come in and goes out to the motors there. Okay, then the voltage travels from this plug over here, this big one, this is 205, P205, I mean, excuse me, um, P205, and it goes up here to the central control computer and comes in here at P105. So again, the little review, it comes starts from the power supply to the service switch to the Molex plug on the frame, the left-hand side, into P206 here, and again, then it goes in and out through 207 and 205, okay? So those are the, that's how it travels. And then it comes into your computer up here, P105. One thing to remember is this. You can't go buy the LEDs on the power supply. Sure, I've shown you have power there, but do you have the correct voltages? It only takes one and a half volt to light an LED. So it can be very deceiving thinking that, oh, everything should be working. I got three lights on the power supply. Well, let's find out. Let's go first to the MET control board. And let's we got the we got the common probe in plug P tool tool six and we got in pin number five black with the white stripe. This is a larger common. We're gonna go to the first wire on the sheet. Okay, the sheet's right here. We're gonna shoot go to the orange. Now look at the meter. It should be at least eight volts. This one says ten. This is a rebuilt power supply. We upgraded the Zenith diodes to put out a little more voltage to account for voltage droppage as the voltage travels along the wiring harnesses. We don't want it to go below eight volts. If you do, chances are the processor and the computer might not work properly. Okay, so you got, I want you to be able to see the meter here too. So I'm gonna bring the meter over next to the wires that I'm doing. Okay, so that's supposed to be eight volts, it's 10. Okay, the next wire on the sheet says brown with a white stripe, it should be eight volts. Let's see if we got eight volts there. We do, we have at least 10 volts, okay. Pin third is open, pin four, black with no reading, pin five, gray, inner, this is the inner Kim switch, no reading there. Pin six, the yellow Kim switch. Okay, let's go back to pin one, two, three, four, five, let's see here, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, right here. That should be eight volts, okay? Pin six is saying that this is the outer Kim, okay? Then you got pin seven, the gray wire. It should be 28 volts DC, which it is. And pin seven is the wire for the money meter. Okay, pin nine. Pin nine is the white, it's a toggle signal. Pin 10, white with orange stripe. Is, okay, let's see here, white, orange stripe. Do, do, do. Let me just see here. You gotta look at the colors of the wires. It can be hard to see sometimes. Okay, we got a white with a. Mm, let's see here. This is just a white wire. Okay, the, the common probe fell out, so we gotta stick it back in. If you lose your foliage, look at your probes, see if they fall out. Okay, it should be 28 volts. Next one should be 28 volts. Next one, we're just gonna go down the line. 10 volts. Um, this is the white with the green stripe. This is the optical switch index. Um, this is a this is the white optical switch home the purple stripe. So again, if you follow this sheet, it's going to tell you each each wire the voltages and what they do. So if you have any problem with the jukebox not toggling properly, 
you're going to follow, you're going to check this voltage. Now, the, if the voltages are good here, at this point here, then they should be good going into the computer. So we're going to go back up to the central control computer now and take a look at that. Okay. Um, we're going to use this black wire here. Right here, the white stripe. We're going to use it as our common. And we're going to do the same thing we just did. Okay. That's the, we're going to see if we get this in there. There it is. Okay, so again, the orange wire, if, if the colors should be the same, they should be the same voltages. 10 volts. You see that? Okay, and again, the second one, 10 volts. I'm going to travel up to here, the green up here, 10 volts. See, it drop, just dropped a little bit, two tenths. Uh, we're going to go to white with the blue stripe, 28 volts. So that's how it works. And each, each particular wire is called out, the colors. And also what it does, optical switch, optical home, toggle signal, uh, and so on. Turntable motor, and it also gives you it also gives you information how to troubleshoot the turntable motor, which is right here. Okay, it has a section on that too. If you're a customer of ours or you become a customer of ours, we'll be happy to send you a copy of this if you want. Um, it's been many times we've spent an hour or two with customers on the phone helping them try sh troubleshoot their, their voltage issues with their wiring in the jukebox. Um, by having this and having a multimeter, you, you eliminate the middle person of having to need a serviceman. Between having someone, all you need is a little mechanical ability and not be afraid to do it. And, and you can do it. If you need our help and support, we'll be happy to help you. Just call us. If, if we can't spend too much time with you on the phone at that time, we'll set up an appointment to work with you, and you'll be able to fix your own jukebox. Now, let's say the voltages are all good, and you got a problem. And again, the jukebox is constantly grabbing the record, putting it down, picking up, putting it down. Chances are, if the wiring is good going into the computer, then you have a bad computer. On the same thing with the MEC control board. Let's say the thing is constantly scanning and spinning. If the voltage is good, going good into there, chances are either the MEC board or the computer is bad. And at that time, we'd ask you to send in your two component units for us to test. We help you diagnose your jukebox down to the component level. At that time, we ask you to leave it to the experts to be able to properly diagnose your circuit boards and repair them as needed. Um, that's what it's all about. So. Basically, it's just having a, uh, having a multimeter, having, having this voltage outline troubleshooting sheet, and having the, the desire to just to give it a try. If you do that, you, can, you truly can fix your jukebox, or you truly can measure the voltages. As these, vo as these units get older, let's say within 5 to 10 years, 50% of all jukeboxes will have a voltage issue either one time or another, you're going to have these issues. And whether you can find a serviceman that can fix it, which again, chances are that it's getting harder and harder to find a serviceman to come to your house. But if you have the, if you just have a little bit of mechanical ability, you can do this. You can fix this yourself. It's not guesswork. It's, it's proven science. So I want to thank you today for being a part of this our, this segment on troubleshooting voltages on the row record model jukebox. My name is Bruce Wentworth. It's been a pleasure having you from A&B Jukebox Repair. We hope to see you again. Thank you.